Yeah, yeah, Shalom, Shalom. This is the book of Jude, verse 24. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy, to the only wise power, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever, so be it. Giving our praises, our honor, and our glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachaha Chodash. Double honor to mighty Jews, the apostles, the elders, and the bishops of Great Millstone, who watch over our souls. Shall warm to the Akim will avoid the Lord sincere and serious doing the will of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Gadash. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 to you all. Stay strong and stay mighty. So, you have the brother, the disciple Kosha Benjamin from the branch in Great Millstone, Barbados. And uh, I just want to do another reaction to this video here um, now the first part I did lead us not into temptation which the first half I covered when he and his friend um, was tempted by the devil the devil's recruits they yeah, may call it that the devil's recruits right but he didn't succumb to the temptation he, he, he left but after he left, no, he was, he was, um, he was, he was a target. They, they broke into his home. They, 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 they pretty much let him know that they could interfere with his life. So they want to call this next part here and you know, deliver us from evil. So I think you'll play and um, give me an interaction. Lord really, it shouldn't be long. But let me see what goes front of the house one of the employees is standing there and he's standing in front of a car and he has my phone i'm not sure if he knows that i just saw everything so i'm kind of standing there deer in headlights but he just politely goes here's your phone and here's your ride don't worry the driver will take you home so i take my phone and i sit in the car and i'm trying to gauge to see if this driver has any malicious intent but he doesn't seem to and within the first three minutes i i know that they don't think i saw anything they were just getting my stuff prepared and my car prepared to take me home because they're under the impression that i didn't see anything too bad and i got kicked out before any horrible things started happening to people inside of this party so i get in the car and i'm checking my phone my phone was fully charged when i got here so i i don't know what they did but my phone won't turn on i have to sit through this 30 minute car ride one of my best friends is back at this party getting mistreated and recorded doing horrible things and i can't tell anybody so i get through this 30 minute horrible suspense filled car ride thinking about all of the people that were so nice to me inside of this party and the whole intent of this party was to butter me up to get me to do these horrible things and when i finally get back to my apartment I run upstairs, I plug my phone into the charger, and the first texts that come through are from my friend Joe. And I completely forgot that my friend Joe was coming to visit me. He was coming on a little mini vacation, and I was going to play tour guide and show him around the city. So now I'm thinking, I only have like four and a half hours to sleep before I have to go pick up my friend from the airport. And I still don't know if my other friend is okay. So I'm blowing up David's phone because he's still at this party, but I set a timer so I get to the airport to pick up my other friend. So I barely get any sleep. I drive to LAX to go pick up Joe, and I drive him back to my apartment. And when I'm coming back into my apartment, David's in the lobby and he's talking to some other big creators like bouncing video ideas. It's like 9 30 10 a.m at this point so everybody's just kind of having coffee by the cafe and chatting. I tell Joe to go upstairs to my apartment and drop off his luggage and I go ask David if I could talk to him really quick. I'm clearly very distressed and he's being very jokey with me and he doesn't seem like anything bad happened and he's just kind of making fun of me for getting kicked out of the party. I'm just letting him talk for a little bit and I finally tell him I was looking in through the next window. I saw what they made him do and I was just asking him if he's okay and the second I said that he immediately switched on me and he started started damn near cussing me out and saying friendship ending things and his eyes turned from happy and giddy to filled with almost fear and a little bit of betrayal when he stormed off he pulled out his phone and he was calling somebody as if he was like reporting something back to them i immediately start freaking out i assume that he's telling them that i saw what they did and now i have my friend upstairs who thinks he's just on vacation when i just saw hyper successful rich people doing unspeakable acts and they have all of the resources to come after me they know where i live and david is 
isn't even on my side because the dirt that they have on him now. I have to pretend that everything's okay to Joe because he flew all the way out here for a vacation and I don't even really know how bad the situation is. I don't even know how to tell him about everything that happened the night before. And I promised Joe that we we're going to go to Runyon Canyon this morning. So he goes and changes into hiking gear and I drive him over to Runyon Canyon. We do the hike for a few hours and when we come back and I check my mail, there's another letter from these people and I take it to the bathroom because I don't even want Joe to see it. And it's a screenshot of the surveillance footage of me looking in through the window and a little handwritten note, just a reminder of the worst mistake you've ever made. Curiosity killed the cat. And I start freaking out. I know that David just betrayed me and told them that I saw and now they have proof that I saw. Now I'm just a walking liability. So the quality to them and now they're so they have his address and David his friend betrayed him right because he 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 in league now with with um the ones above so he sold his friend for fortune and fame is that it? threatening me and that that was the worst mistake that I've ever made and insinuating that curiosity killed the cat. I'm the cat, but it's still not enough to tell Joe about what happened. So I just go on with this charade and I'm just playing tourist, bringing my friend around the city. And the first day, nothing happened. And to this day, I firmly believe that the only reason they didn't do anything to me is because Joe was there with me that whole week and he had just finished the police academy and he was officially a police officer. So I think me being with him is the only thing that kept me safe because they weren't willing to do anything to a police officer and I knew for sure they were keeping an eye on me the next day because Joe asked me the night before if I had half and half for our coffees the next morning and I didn't have any half and half and he just jokingly said who has coffee and doesn't have half and half it was a conversation in passing it was a joke and the next morning we woke up and there was a full half and half in my fridge and the only reason I noticed that is because Joe said thanks for running out early and grabbing half and half you didn't have to do that I was kidding I didn't go and grab that half and half I knew that somebody was not only listening but entered my apartment that night while we were sleeping and then they started to do these things that only I would notice. Things that if you told anybody, they would look at you like you were crazy. Each night that we came home and we were just winding down and watching TV, I would go to turn my TV on and the remote control wouldn't work. And I would check the batteries and the batteries would be switched from positive to negative and negative to positive. Like they came into my house and just flipped my batteries. I know that my remote control worked the day before and they just needed me to know that they were in my house and flipped my batteries just to let me know that they were invading my privacy on a daily basis. And then it started asking escalating to when I would take Joe to lunch or we would pop to the grocery store or we would go to the movies and we would come back to the car and my left blinker would be on. They would just open my car and put it down and every time we would come back to the car, my left turning signal would be on. It happened like six times. How can I tell anybody that somebody broke into my car and turned my left signal down? It's something that only I would notice and I can't tell Joe because I'm not trying to scare him and it's also something that I don't even think he would take seriously. He would probably say, you probably hit it down when you were stepping out of the car and then things started to pick up. They started to do very specific things to me that weren't just by chance. We came home one day and I locked the door behind me like I was doing every time because I was super, super paranoid. My apartment door lock just locked swiftly. My apartment door lock doesn't lock swiftly. I would have to like press into it and jiggle it and force it to lock. And it's been like that since I moved in. And it had this sharp little nub on the front that I would feel with my thumb every single day. And one of the days we came home and it just smoothly locked and the nub wasn't there. So they were letting me know that I can't even lock them out. But how do I tell anybody that they're doing this to me? Because they would just say the apartment was probably aware of it and changed it. And I still wasn't able to tell Joe because I would think that he would come to the same conclusion. But then the next day, we go to the car to go to breakfast and we get into my old car that I've had for five or six years at the time. And I grab my gear shifter and I go to pull it into reverse and it smoothly goes from park to reverse. And my gear shifter doesn't smoothly go from park to reverse. You have to wiggle it in a certain way. You have to press the button with your thumb in a certain way to get it into reverse. I only know this because I drove this car every single day for five years and this gear shifter is pretty much broken. It's an old car. And that morning I got into my car and it smoothly went from park to reverse and the wooden finish on the gear shifter was different. Mine had scratches on it and this one was brand new. So they were telling me not only are they able to just break into my car and turn the left signal down, they're also willing to manipulate my car. Now I know for sure. So hold on, Noah. That his gear shifter has a problem going into reverse. Yeah, you see, the, we didn't make some high level. They all know, or, or when you point your TV, you know, the, 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 uh, the music you listen to, the food you like, 
We just go out, we just party. Gonna call you drive truck. They know everything about you. See, they won't be letting more say, right? They won't be letting more say, right? We got preset there quick, right? Uh, I would be like God, right? Uh, so like it, it will be I mean I see the seat of God um Second Thessalonians 2 and 4. Second Thessalonians 2 and 4. Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God or is of power. Right? So he saw Edom. He, he got all these cameras, he got all the Heavenly Father knows. The very years of our head, he so he didn't want to do the same. Is that right? so? He he accomplishes a diligent search. Another preset, right? He accomplishes a diligent search, right? So he knows everything about you, right? Accomplishes a diligent search. Psalm 64 and verse 6 they search out iniquities, they accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. You see? Right? So they know they know everything about me. You see? Right? They know everything about me. You know what disease you got. You know what I mean? Your bank account, your 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 your, your job, right? Where you live. That way, they was able to tamper with his uh, uh, belongings. Joe isn't safe either, and me not telling him these things puts him into danger because I'm driving him around in this car. And if they could change my gear shifter, why wouldn't they be able to cut my brakes? So I basically just break down and I have to tell Joe everything from start to finish about this weird party with this weird agent and the little things that I've been noticing all week and that this was the last straw. And Joe believed me because we used to drive around in my car together all of the time, and sometimes he would drive my car. And he made me promise that I did not get that fixed. The gear shifter was still broken yesterday and it's fixed today, and I didn't do that so that won him over and he basically said we need to get out of here it shook him too he didn't like the idea of these people in the house when i told him i didn't get the half and half when i told him all of these things that were adding up over the last couple days it freaked him out and he's like bro we got to go back to your apartment we got to get your stuff we got to get you out of here then my entire world is shattering i moved out here and all of these things were going great for me and i had a place and i had friends and i didn't want to leave maybe the stuff will die out i'll be able to work with other people it's going to be okay i don't want to just leave my apartment leave all my stuff but joe insisted that we went back to my apartment to grab his stuff in mine and then go stay in a motel before he leaves the next day and when we got to my apartment david was in the lobby with other creators by the cafe again and i went up to him i didn't really have any idea about what i was going to say to him all he did was hand me a coffee ignore everything that i said and walk away but then when i looked at the coffee it had a little napkin wrapped around it i saw that something was written in sharpie on the napkin it said i'm so sorry you have to leave tomorrow with him otherwise it's me and you and i went upstairs and i packed a couple backpacks and i left 
left LA the next morning with my friend and I never went back. Joe and I rushed out of that city as fast as we could. I packed as much of my stuff as I could and I and we just started driving. We were both genuinely scared for our safety at that point. So we decided to skip Joe's scheduled flight and just drive to Las Vegas. And then we were just going to fly home from there. There was something that just felt comforting about being out of the state. Not to mention Joe wanted a real briefing about what went down. Because I had just basically told him the cliff notes and begged him to believe me so that we could pick up and leave as soon as possible. For the first two hours of the drive, we primarily kept our heads on a swivel and just made sure that we didn't take any wrong turns to further extend this trip. There were a few cars that made me feel like we were being followed, but it was just my paranoia enhancing an A-type personality driver into a stalker. Once we were out of California state lines and into Nevada, we could both finally exit. I felt real relief wash over me for the first time since I got kicked out of that party. We stopped about 15 minutes into Nevada at a pit stop. We used their Wi-Fi to book a hotel for Vegas that night, along with the plane tickets for the next morning. Once we had our escape plan fully booked, Joe just started laughing and I couldn't help but just start laughing too. We shared a lot of crazy stories growing up and we always seemed to find ourselves in sticky situations together. So it was just hilarious that his fun trip to visit me turned into this. It felt really good to laugh about it because it made me feel like it was finally over. We got back into the car to continue our drive and Joe playfully said, so you have one hour to explain to me why we're fleeing Los Angeles over some half and half and a gear shifter before we get to Vegas and we make this trip worth it. I realized how bizarre this whole situation must have looked from his perspective. He flew in for a fun vacation and arrived to see his friend in a crisis. As I started to explain to him the series of events, things really started to click for me, especially with his input as a police officer. I'm going to recap some of the events that I had already explained, but with the conclusions that we came to together. Clearly we were just perfect targets for him. We were young kids with enough of a following on socials to influence all of the other young creators in the area. We had just made a major change in our life by moving across the country, and we were completely isolated from our families who we could consult with about important decision making. And we were in a bad financial situation because at the time, just having a following on the internet didn't equal revenue. We were perfect targets to be indoctrined into a system where they could have full control over our budding careers. And apparently that's exactly what cult-like communities look for for potential members. Not to mention, we were in LA trying to make a career in entertainment, and it seemed like they held the key to our dreams. As I was explaining to Joe the invitation and how it showed up to my house, we came to the conclusion that this guy approaching us at that party was not a coincidence. He had to have been scouting us prior to the time that I thought that we just met by chance. The party itself was a trap as well. When I finally had the chance to process what he said to me about the slow drip is better than a flood, it really started to make sense. Each room was designed to slowly introduce you into giving into temptation and sin. Everybody there being so nice and inviting was clearly on purpose. Seeing all of these people that you've looked up to for years indulging in these temptations of each room and inviting you to join in with them is perfect peer pressure. You don't want to let your idols down, so you voluntarily engage in an activity. That's the problem there. You say you don't want to let your idols down. Right? You're basically calling them a god because idol worship was about to um, serve a god. He said, and that thing he said there, he said, um, let me get the preset, right? Everything was too good to be true, right? It's second Corinthians 11 or 14, right? I know Marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You see that? So everything was was beautiful, so to speak. Everything was too good to be true. Right? But that was to deceive you. That's right. Remember we dealing with Satan so he can come in a deceptive form. Give out the video idols down so you voluntarily engage in an activity in each room that just gets progressively worse and worse and of course they start with flirtiness and overeating delicious food and of course spirits because those things are so easy to give into but the temptations of the night keep getting worse as you go on he wanted me to feel the slow drip so when it was time to commit the heinous acts of the sixth room it didn't feel like a flood it's clear why they kicked me out when they did i wasn't indulging the way everybody else had and when it came to the time to defame my religion it was the last straw most people like 
like myself would think it was just part of the party theme. But to them, it's the test to see if you're broken down enough to defame your religion for the fun of the party. That's why the sixth room was the flood. It was dramatically worse than the rooms that I had experienced. And the only way somebody would give in to the peer pressure to do what they were doing in that room is them being primed to do so with everything that happened before and had just spoken the words that they're not God-fearing. I realized that the people that would go to that party didn't just blow up overnight because of the power of that little cultish group. They scouted young creators like myself and David who they believed were going to blow up regardless of their help and get them to commit heinous acts on camera. So when they did eventually blow up, they had the perfect blackmail on them to control them. They would try to get to you early so before you were making money independently so that they could control you. Because if you were already established and wealthy, why would you even care about going to a party like this? You just don't care. It's too late for them to infiltrate your life. Do they help you with big collaborations? Yeah. But these collaborations are built off of fear and trauma. That's how they keep their group so tight. You can't get into this group unless you also do these horrible things. They kicked me out and let me leave because they thought I actually didn't see anything too bad. From the outside perspective, I had just gone to a cool A-list party in a beautiful home filled with beautiful people and amazing food. I couldn't say anything bad about it publicly without sounding bitter that I got kicked out. That's how groups like this need to operate. From the outside looking in, it has to look amazing and wonderful to be a part of. From the inside, they need blackmail that's so bad on you that you can never speak out against it without getting your reputation destroyed. It made sense why they went after me the way they did. They need to do things to me that only I would notice because they couldn't be seen openly harassing me. It would make them look bad. So they had to infiltrate my privacy and scare me secretly. I still don't know how far they would have gone to get me to leave the city. If they would get violent or try to get me to fall victim to an accident. But they wanted to scare me out of the city. And I thought back to my very kind friend that warned me about this party and how secretive he was being about how much he knew about it. He couldn't just openly say how weird those people were because it would make him a target. He just knew that if he kindly declined their offers and acted like he knew nothing about them, he could go about pursuing his career unbothered. And it really made sense why they would target potential big creators as well. Because if the kid with the most clout is a part of this group and the only way to collaborate with him was to go through the same indoctrination, they would be able to control an entire generation of creators. To be honest, they're very good at what they do. There was a clear system that they followed and the way that they approached harassing me out of the city. It was done at a professional level. Joe told me that it's called gang stalking and that most of the time it actually isn't happening. And what I mean by that is most of the time that somebody reports that a crime like this is being committed, it's actually a paranoid schizophrenic having an episode. So they harass you in a way that even the police department would consider it a mental disorder opposed to gang stalking. Everything about the way these people operate is cult-like and everything that they do is intentional. I was never even a conspiracy theorist or anything like that, but my perspective on show business in Hollywood completely changed on the way to Vegas. All the dots connected and I saw how truly evil some people in that industry actually are. And when I got to Vegas, I started to see how openly they show it. I know I've spent this whole time talking about how secret and exclusive this party was and how everybody that knows about it has their lips zipped shut, but when we had arrived at our hotel near the Strip, I started looking around at the big signs and promotions and they really don't hide it. There was cultish symbolism in all of the music, live performances and movie trailers. What used to look like just cool design Designs and eccentric artists was blatant symbolism for what was actually going on. I will never look at showbiz the same after that. I'm extremely happy being an independent artist, safe in the middle of the country, away from those cultish hedonists. I never received another letter or heard from David again. But what I can tell you is that everybody that was affiliated with that group became massively famous. But everybody involved fell as hard as they ascended and have had even more massive controversies. And to anybody pursuing a life in the arts or social media, do not fall into this trap. They will promise you everything that you've ever wanted, but they'll take it away whenever they please. And I promise you will hurt the people around you in the process. Welcome to the society. Yeah. <clears throat> so that basically, yeah. so let me just get two precepts there. Um, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter um, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, it says here the armor of God, right? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of the most high that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know what? We get another priest up there, right?
First Timothy 6 and 9, but they that will be rich for into temptation and a sneer and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which draw men in destruction and perdition. Because you heard him say, you ascend fast, but you also descend faster. Because that's how you, you serve Satan. You know, it's temporary. So, so back in Ephesians 6 and 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Is that? And when you enter into Hollywood, you know what I mean? You want to be an actor, you want, you know what I mean? You want to be a top engineer, you know what I mean? But you want to put in the work, you sacrifice, you know? The, 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 the rightful sacrifice, you know what I mean? You want to go through the back door. That's right. These people got to lead way over you. That's right. So we're dealing against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. See that? This world. So you got people that rule this world, that rule it in total darkness, brother. That's right. You want to get ahead? You got to bow to them. Against spiritual weakness in high places. So how we can escape all of that? Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of the Most High, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and have it done all to stand. So that's how we uh, we get delivered from evil. See, right? having on the armor of the Most High. Right? Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, which is what the Scriptures, because He said, when they came out to His religion, He didn't cross the line. Right? So you gotta remain faithful. So right? even unto death. So rock four twenty years, strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. So right? Stand therefore, have your loins good about with truth, have it on the breastplate of righteousness. Right, because you're gonna do like like um there's another preset here, right? Um Well, this is this is one here, but Psalm twenty six and ten. In whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. You see, but this is what we want to hear. Isaiah thirty three fifteen. He that walketh righteously, and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood. I shut up his eyes from seeing evil. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munition of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. Right? Another preset is in the book of Psalms. Psalms 1. Uh... No, let me get no Salak here. Um, there's um, Psalms chapter 2. Let me see. Right, I was right, I was right. Psalms 101. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Like his friend David, his friend David 
sat in the seat of scorn for meaning he partook of their ways. See? But his delight is in the law of Yahweh. But Hashem Yahweh Shai and his law that he meditate day and night. See? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in the season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So they ain't gonna flourish. They ain't gonna flourish, right? Not a precept. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. And five, that saith Yahweh Bahashum Yahweh Shai, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and make a flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord Yahweh Bahashum Yahweh Shai. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit parched places in the wilderness, in the salt land, and not inhabited. So this is what happens when you trust in man, but when you join these secret societies, you want to get fame or fortune. This will happen, man. They say you you wither faster than you than you grow. You know what I mean? You say so. Going back, um, Ephesians chapter 6 and 14 again stand therefore having your loins good about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness right? and not wickedness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace so this should be your 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 we stand firm on you should stand firm on the truth above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked cause yeah boy yeah see right I take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of the most high praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints so we gotta be praying always because um sitting like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Is that it? So let me get um Matthew says the Lord's Prayer again, but I want the second half is we focusing upon Saint Matthew chapter six and verse Uh, 13 and lead us not into temptation there's the point you're looking at here but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever so be it so deliver us from evil because evil is alive and well so I, Deliver us from evil, boy. Right? How was shy now? My right. How was shy? It deliver ma. Deliver us. How was shy now? My right. Right. Deliver us from my evil. Right is evil. Right? Sorry? First Chronicles 4 and 10 and Jabaz called on the God of Israel. So he prayed, and it's really says prayer always, right? Saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my course, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And the Moses granted him that which he requested, because the prayers go 
to the more say, you say, from the saints, you say, yeah, my favorite preset here, boy, Psalms 121 and 7, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, he shall preserve thy soul, the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forevermore, you say, Jeremiah 15, 21, and they will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked, and will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. See? So you got to pray the Lord deliver us from evil, keep us from temptation, and deliver us from evil, boy. See? See, in John 17, 15, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, yeah? But for them which thou hast given me. I'm sorry. I pray not. So oh, shoot, that is prayer. So like here, Saint John seventeen and fourteen. Um, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. See, so Yahweh Shai went before his father and prayed, right? And pray for us, right? St. John 17 and 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Why? Because the preset says, let me get a preset here if I run. Um uh the preset is in is in the apocrypha. Um to come for few yeah second edges eight and one and he asked me saying the more so you have made this world for many but the world to come for few so this world <laughs> you have made this world for many this this girl this this current world you living in here the ungodly this is their world say right? but the world to come for few which is the kingdom of heaven so going back uh, why this is do that, man? Jeez, I pray. I don't know why this is do that. So going back, um, come back up. It's a lot here, man. So going back, is it John seventeen? Then it get shot, shot. I don't know why this is do that. It's in John seventeen and nine. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. See? See, Lord praying for us, we. See, John 17, 15, I pray not that thou shouldest tear them all of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. See? God, God, you know what I mean? It's confident, boy, that Yahweh Shai is before his father, right? You know what I mean? Praying for his elect, right? Keep means to guard, right? Genesis 48, 16, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, right? Psalms 34, my favorite precept, Psalms 34, verse 7, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. You see? So Genesis 48, 16, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them, and the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. God. Galatians 1, verse 4, who gave himself for our sins? That he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of the Mosai and our Father. Second Thessalonians 3 verse 3. But the Lord is fearful who shall establish you and keep you from all evil. Ooh. Call there, boy. First John 5 18, we know that was that whosoever is born of the Mosai sinneth not. But he that 
you know, because we, we, we basically we guiltless. You know what I mean? If, if it's part of that elect number, you know what I mean? Um, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, say. But he that is begotten of the most, so he keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. See? Read that again. First John 4, 18. We know that whosoever is born of the most, so he sinneth not. But he that is begotten woo, of the most high keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. That's a good priest at the end. They're going to move. Go to the plantation. Yeah, so hey, call halal. Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Ocha Kodash. Double honor to my teachers, the apostles, the elders, and the bishops of Great Millstone. Who watch over our souls, shall warm to the Yakin, who avoided our sincere and serious. Doing the will of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Ocha Kodash. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, to you all. Shall warm.